Winter Clash. Winter Clash! It's in Winter Clash, are you ready? The most raucous, wild, non-stop action inline skating competition going. <laughs> if a stag or hen do was a skating event, this would be it. It's like the New Year's Eve party of rollerblading. It is the best contest I've been to like ever. The event attracts hordes of skaters from all across the world, including the best of the best, the top dons, vying for their chance to be crowned King of Winter Clash. So is Winter Clash the greatest active park competition in rollerblading and can it evolve even further? Let's have a look at where the thing began and how it's become such a monster of an event. The 29th of January 2005, Aurich, Germany, is where the main man in charge, Jojo Jacoby, put on the first comp kicking off with a pro and amateur event with prizes for most creative trick and best trick. The first event went down an absolute treat, so Jojo decided to keep things going on to the next year. In 2006, they moved to Mulhausen in Germany. 2007, it became a two-day event and they introduced the girls' division. By far the biggest event in rollerblading, I'd have to say. Um, everybody's here. Everybody. Things kept cooking and growing in 2008. In 2009, they moved to Belgium, but disaster struck. The skate park burnt down. Jojo had to move the Winter Clash from Belgium to the Netherlands in a day. He lost a couple of thousand euros, but he made it happen. Nice one, Jojo, man. Logistics king. 2010, he went all in. He went big to put blading back on the map. He got a huge event arena, he had to rent a mobile skate park, build and install everything from scratch, hosted an insanely expensive after show party. The event was incredible and the skaters really came out for it. However, there was little interest from outsiders and it actually put Jojo in 70k of personal debt. <laughs> On the plus, Winter Clash was well and truly cemented in the rollerblading calendar and from 2011 onwards it was held at Area 51 Skate Park in Eindhoven. Things continued to grow, the juniors were added in 2013, the first ever winner being a young Don Bruce, with future teammate Levy Van Rijn coming in third as well actually. Winner Clash kept getting bigger and bigger year on year. Now you'd assume that like an event this size would have some serious financial backing, but the truth of the matter is that like Jojo and his mates were putting it all together through like hard work, determination, and love for rollerblading. A lot of the time, people were doing it for free. In 2016, he was put in the uncomfortable position where he had to actually ask the community to raise some funds to keep the event going, and they did. Cash back. The 2016 event became particularly memorable for Jojo for that reason. It was run on the love of the community. There was a couple more challenges. The pandemic reared its ugly head and tried to ruin things, so in 2021, they adapted to the climate and went digital. Everyone from across the globe, at varying levels of ability, got involved in mad challenges, which seen people grinding stuff in their gaff, in supermarkets, encouraging beginners to get involved. There was a lot of team effort put into it. Not only was that smart, it was really heartwarming as well felt like it brought the community together. Over the years, it's seen some insane action from some huge names. Winners include the likes of Aragon, Sizemore, Nils, Montre, Atkinson. Interestingly, Mesmer teammates, Don Bruce and Martin Dunning have won both the juniors and the amateurs. Now, Winter Clash is loved because it's far more than just the main comp. There's the Hang Losers Bowl comp, which is completely turbo. There's a trade fair, so you can see all the latest gear. You've got premieres, you've got screenings, live Jump Street interviews and talks. On top of all that, it feels just like it's everybody coming together for a big knees up. More like a festival. Jojo has said, whatever comes next in my life, it won't be as emotional, intense, and as amazing as Winter Clash simply because it won't be done together with my closest friends and such a large group of international homies and supporters. Now I reckon it's the greatest park contest we've got going on right now. They took a break this year, but it's coming back next year and I'm really excited for it. You can go and get your tickets now, actually. It feels like they've got everything covered, but I've, uh, I've had a few ideas of additional things they could add to it. Now Jojo, if there's anything that takes your fancy here, mate, just ping me a line and we can uh, discuss it in more detail. First idea, guns tank. 
You could go Noel Edmonds house party style and just like stick him in the box and pour like guns into them. Or you could go more like get your own back style where there's like a pool of guns and there's like some sort of ramp leading into it. So you're firing people into the guns. It could be a situation where like, you know, you ask them a few tricky questions. If they get it wrong, they get guns. Or it could just be that they missed a trick and then they get guns for it. You could even have a spot on the park where you had like a rainbow rail or just a straight rail actually or a wall ride over a big gunge pool. Like you get bonus points for doing a trick on it but the risk is you might fall in the gunge. I mean I could even do live product reviews for you and if I don't like it they get gunged, which leads me smoothly on to Egg Alley. Now Egg Alley is a specific zone in the skate park. We'd have like simple obstacles, like just a grind box or something like that. But the thing is, yeah, if you go into Egg Alley and you try and do a simple trick and you fail, you get egged. And the only way you're allowed to egg people though is if you put on the egg suits. You have to have a load of people dressed up as massive eggs egging skaters when they miss tricks and that way also when you dress up there's like no confusion as to what area you're going into you're not going to accidentally skate into egg alley are you best parallel parking karaoke <laughs> Now I don't mean like after the event, let's all go and have a sing song. That is fun, that is great. No, I mean in the event. You can either have like your teammate sing a little, little bit of karaoke as you do your run. No need for a soundtrack, just get your mate singing your favorite song. Or for even more bonus points, the actual skater sings karaoke as they're doing their run. Imagine that, trying to throw like a full cab fish while you're singing Craig David seven days. We're doing a like misty flip with a little bit of Kate Bush on the go, mate. Absolutely amazing. Who can build an IKEA desk the fastest? <laughs> that is a serious challenge, man. Imagine that. That should be the warm up for the finals, mate, to get everybody really jeered up. People just racing, trying to put like a desk together. Oh, the excitement. Could be a little bit of controversy with that one if anybody was found to be taking PEDs or like carrying an extra couple of screws in their pocket or like a special screwdriver. How about a meat raffle? And for those of you who don't know what a meat raffle is, it's like a normal raffle, except you win like pieces of meat are traditionally like they're held in pubs i don't know how much they happen these days but that'd be a great thing imagine going to winter cash and winning like a nice t-bone steak or something like that obviously there'll be alternatives for vegetarians and uh, vegan stuff i don't know like linda mccartney's kind of stuff how about one of those flight simulator machines except the video would be takeshi yasutoko's winning run at the x games whoa that'd be amazing actually going on that journey with him whoa bio flip the trick violation confession box you go in there confess your trick violations just get it off your chest man don't burden yourself down with it just let it go don bruce is actually a really good cook so uh don bruce's cooking lessons that might be quite fun splat the rat now if you don't know what splat the rat is you basically get a toy rat a tube you fire it down the tube and somebody else tries to splat the rat as it comes out the other end it's actually a little bit more tricky than you'd think this version of it right what you do is you'd either go to a vert or just like the biggest quarter pipe you've got put a tube down the side of that and just play it there Imagine how much fun that would be. Imagine a skater mid run decides to stop and do splat the rat for some uh, bonus points. Welly wanging. One of my favorite things to do outside of rollerblading is wang wellies as far as I can. I think it's a great activity and it's loads of fun. I don't think you should replace the welly with a skate to make it more skate themed. I think we should just stick to wellies. That'd be a great laugh. Who can make the tallest cheese and ham sandwich? Who can eat Greg's the fastest? Race a horse round the course? I think this might be a proper English one for fates, but guess how many coins in a jar? Oh man, that's absolutely brilliant. Like, you know, when somebody goes in, oh, it's about 700. Hey, you're, you're an idiot, mate. There's at least a thousand in there. Like, you can really make a fool of yourself at the uh, guess how many coins are in the jar. You could even convert it to like, maybe like, guess how many bearings are in the jar? Punch bag machine, absolute easy one. There's a lot of like, there's a lot of chat going around rollerblading about who's the hardest. It's the only way to prove it. Punch bag machine. My money is definitely on Derek Henson. Guess the weight of the prize cow or pony. Donkey rides. You could even have like a little petting zoo, you know, to calm down the ride. Just imagine that you're a little bit nervous, like, oh, first time in the finals or first time at winter class, you know, like, oh, I'm a bit nervous. You just go to the petting zoo, like pet a couple of goats and stuff like that. Stroke a sheep, calm yourself down. Best run of your life. Let them loose, man. Let them wild on the course, a load of chickens running everywhere. And part of your run is you've got to collect as many chickens as possible. Sick. Bit of tug of war between brands or teams and stuff like that. It might actually be a really good way to decide the winner. Say if it's a really close, like, final battle. Tug of war. Multi-ball madness. Multi madness. 
You know, like on a pinball machine when you get multiple and a load of balls fire into the thing. Same thing, mid run. Somebody jumps up and hits the buzzer. Maybe you can only do it like a few times, but then it starts multi ball madness and all the crowds are allowed to throw like balls into the course and stuff. But like, you know, those really big balloons that kind of don't really hurt people too much. But I mean, it definitely put you off your run. Could be a laugh. The three legged division, like the three legged race. Two skaters, one leg tied together, and then like you just <laughs> you do your normal run. Amazing, that would be unbelievable. Revolving floor. There used to be this club in Newcastle, so I've been told, called Casino Royale, which was on a boat, but it had a revolving dance floor. <laughs> Incredible. Same thing. Same thing at Winter Clash. Revolving floor, got a rail on it and it revolves. Slingshot. Why don't you just set up like a human slingshot so people can get like supercharged runs? Which would actually also coincide with a uh, best diving header. Get on the slingshot, fire yourself up the ramp, go off a massive launcher into a foam pit obviously, or maybe it's better to go into another ramp and just do a massive diving header. Oh, that'd be unbelievable. Guess what's in the bag competition. That'd be absolutely sick, man. A couple of prizes for somebody, but you've got to guess exactly what's in the bag. Like, can you guess what's in this bag? Let's have a look. It's a lint roller. Could have won yourself a lint roller, but did you get that right? I don't know why they don't just have a massive trick request box. Like you just put all your requests in there and they just read them out. Read out the skater, read out the trick. Does he want to do it or not? If he does, he gets bonus points. Pockets full of change. Fill your pockets full of change. Do your normal run, but you've got to do at least three airs and one of them has to be a flip. Then you count how much change you've got left at the end of your run. Dead leg category. Everybody in that category has to have like a dead leg before they start their run and see how many tricks they can still do. House of mirrors, endless fun. Have a section of the course where it's just like loads of mirrors. Obviously like ones that are pretty like solid that aren't gonna break, but imagine that. You drop in, you think you're about to go up another ramp, you just go straight into a mirror. Comedy gold. A good one for the audience. Trade skates. It's just a massive button. We're only allowed to press it once though. Mid run when there's like loads of people flying about, somebody just hits the trade skate button. Everybody has to swap skates and then continue their run. Oh, what's going to happen next? Teach people how to say each other's names. Laser skate, you know, like a laser quest or quasar is what it was called in Jersey. You know where you wear the suits and you have those like gun things and you fire little beams at each other. Have that. If you get shot, you've got to like step out of your run for like 10 seconds or something like that. More eggs, egg and spoon race, except it's like egg and spoon run. You've got to keep the egg on the spoon for your run. <laughs> and the only official way you can end your run is by skating up a travelator, grabbing a rope swing and swinging through some netting, just like they did in the Gladiators. It might not surprise you, but I've got loads more ideas like that. Jojo, if any of those take your fancy, mate, you can have them. You can have them for free on me. Thank you so much to my Patreons for helping me to keep this thing going. Special thank you to Connor Pierce for helping me out with a few ideas. Here's another video you can watch if you want to join my Patreons. Tears start from three quid and they go up to like eight for the exclusive videos. Thanks for watching this man and uh, I'll have another video soon. Spotty dog. <laughs>